In other words, what we need to do is to realize that we can no longer depend upon the freedoms that we have. We can no longer depend upon the courts and the government. And I think that this will become even clearer as time goes on. Hey everyone, it's Elisa Childers here for crossexamined.org, and I'm joined today by Dr. Erwin Lutzer, who's just written a phenomenal book called We Will Not Be Silenced. This is a highly recommended book. This book really inspired me. It talks about all the stuff that we are facing as Christians in our culture right now, outrage culture, uh, racial tensions. We're facing the cultural Marxism that seems to be sort of bubbling up in our culture. And a lot of people are sort of asleep to it. They're complacent to it. But, you know, there are actually people who are advocating to have the U.S. Constitution changed. There are people advocating to pack the Supreme Court. So, Dr. Lutzer, my question for you today is if— that happened, if the Constitution actually were edited, if the Supreme Courts became packed, if our freedoms were essentially taken away, how should the church respond? What is our job as Christians? Should all those things happen? What lessons do we need to relearn? Elisa, I think we have to go back to the early centuries and realize something, that even though the Constitution of the United States is a remarkable document, We've had these many centuries of freedom for which we are deeply grateful. The fact is that the Church of Jesus Christ was not built upon the Constitution. It was built on Christ. Now, for those of you who are watching who've been to Israel, you have been to Caesarea Philippi, where Jesus Christ made that awesome statement, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. If you remember being there, you looked around to the mountain and you saw various caves. Those caves represented places of worship, places where gods were housed, or at least it was believed that gods were there. Jesus made that statement at the very citadel of pagan religion. You and I have not had to learn that lesson because we have taken our freedoms for granted, and we're going to have to relearn the cost of following Jesus Christ. Mm. Let me give you a practical example. A man here at Moody Church who teaches in the public school system here in Chicago said, I have been told that it is not enough for me to simply tolerate same-sex marriage. If I don't celebrate it, I could lose my job. What that man needs to do is to draw a line in the sand and say, I can tolerate certain things, but I cannot celebrate what God has condemned. But I will stand on my convictions, and if I lose my job, I'm going to have to trust God, but something else that the church is going to have to relearn. Will the church of Jesus Christ at that point embrace this man and his family and say that we are going to stand together with you in your faithfulness, and we are going to believe that God is going to honor you, if not in this life, certainly in the life to come. In other words, what we need to do is to realize that we can no longer depend upon the freedoms that we have. We can no longer depend upon the courts and the government, and I think that this will become even clearer as time goes on. We must stand on the word of God, on the promise of Jesus that this is his church. Doesn't mean that there aren't going to be difficulties. There certainly are. Throughout history, many difficulties, martyrdom, people being, of course, marginalized, without jobs. Will we stand? One other word, and that has to do with Germany. Because of my interest in Germany, I've led tours to all the sites of the Reformation many times. When we were in East Germany, a pastor said, the communists said to the Christians, if you go to church, your children will not be allowed to go to school. He said that only about 13% of the Christians were willing to stand strong. The rest went along with the culture they bowed to the communists for the benefit of their children and so forth, and we can understand that pressure. But those who did stand 
who said, we will not bow to the communist regime. Oftentimes, miraculously, God met their need, God strengthened them, and you know what? I want to be close to them at the judgment seat of Jesus Christ because they're going to have the crowns and many of us are going to be much further back. Yeah. Be faithful unto death and I will give thee the crown of life. That is a good word. And if you want more information on Dr. Lutzer's book, we just recorded an hour-long interview that you can find on my YouTube channel. I'm uh, YouTube and Instagram and Facebook at Elisa Childers. You can check those things out there, or you can go to crossexamined.org. 